So today's quick project is this little bracket for the stepper motor that we went over in my other video. Put a link up there. Um, this isn't really anything entertaining to machine, but what we're gonna do here is I use the post processor in Fusion 360 to drive the movements of the Tormach Smart Cool. And so we're gonna show through several different tools, both the Superfly and then the Shear Hog. Uh, there's uh, center drill, drilled and tapped four holes in here, and then uh, then chamfered out the uh, chamfered out the outsides and a couple end mill processes. Um, so I'm gonna go through and show each tool and give a little narration of what I think about that. Uh, in a later video, I may go in and, and look at uh, editing the post-processor a little bit to see because there's a couple tools where I think it should be handled a little bit differently, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, as you can see, well, I don't know if you can see this. Um, I was working on this. It was 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, and I noticed there's a you know gotcha that will get you um, when you make a chamfer in uh, Fusion 360 if it's on the wrong side of the line. Um, so it... Uh, it got me, so I messed up this part a little bit. But there's a big uh, gear that that sits and sits and covers up this spot where it's where it's messed up. So that won't be a big deal. But so we're gonna go ahead, go through and machine this part. I'm running the Tormach Smart Cool. Uh, this is with QualiChem Extreme 250C uh, is the coolant, and I'm gonna, like I said, go through and, and talk about what what I think about how it's handling each tool. This is our facing operation. We've got the Tormach Superfly in there, and here you can see the stream coming out from the Smart Cool. It's using the tool height based on the tool table, and it's pointing towards the center. Obviously, we can't move side to side with the Smart Cool. We can just move up and down. So it's not pointed at the cutter, it's just pointed at the center of the tool. When it starts spinning, we do see that obviously it's it's throwing coolant everywhere and it is working effectively when it's on the side of the plate where there isn't a surface for it to land on and it kind of it kind of just works through but when we jump to a facing operation where it's where there's a plate underneath it it works pretty well so the one tweak I would probably make here would be to, to run a couple trials and see if lowering that height so it lined up with the arc of the cutter see if that made any improvement it, you know that may obviously it, it is going to throw more but that may you know get the coolant more in the right place alternatively it could be good to have it come in through the center of the tool and kind of flood out from that center point so let's we'll do a little bit of testing to see how that works here we're switching to drilling center spot drilling drilling and then tapping these four holes you can see that now the Smart Cool has switched to operating with its target position off of Z0. I actually looked in the code and for some reason they set it, for these drilling operations, it's set at 0 0.025, which is essentially zero, but I don't know, it's weird that it, that it put that in there. You can see as it moves down, it's trying to, well, we'll wait here a second until it uh, starts drilling this hole again to show that. You can see as it moves down how the how the tip moves up to compensate. If you were doing this as close to this edge as we're seeing here, I would probably adjust that in the code so it was a little bit higher. You'll see when we get to tapping, it stays a little bit too far below and it doesn't doesn't actually get on top of that plate, which is the key. See we're perfect right there. It's right where we want it. We're starting also, I think, to see the signs of a little bit of a pressure drop issue that I ran into with this. Part of it may just be positioning at this point, but uh, we're going to see as we get to the tapping operation it not doing quite as perfectly. Let's see, it got a little bit low there. Where having it having it set just a little bit higher on Z0, which you can easily do in the code, would uh, would have kept the coolant on top of that plate. Here we're switching to the tap. And this is still set in the code to Z0. You see it walking up there. 
but see it's not coming up far enough to where it's getting on top of the plate and you know that that may be that we're we're running into this pressure issue where the arc starts to drop off as the pressure gets lower but that right there could easily be fixed in code you just set it you know set it to a half inch or you know three quarters of an inch above z0 and it would it would compensate for that i think See, it did that same thing where it's just it's just real low there. So that that could go better, but it worked out. It just occurred to me where that 0 0.025 number came from. That was the material removed from the facing process, so it just compensated for that when it uh, when it was repositioning the Z0. So I think that's a good thing if you. You know, we're drilling a hole on a lower surface that you had machined before. You know that the post processor is going to take into account the height of that. You know, like say you worked the material down on the outside, and we're drilling, you know, drilling down on that lower surface. It would reset its Z0 position target to that lower surface where you were trying to drill to, which is which is smart in the post processor, I think. So here we switch to an end mill. And again, this is all in the post processor with Fusion. It automatically put in this wiggle up and down. And I think this is gonna be a pretty powerful tool to compensate for the lack of high pressure. The, the movement here seems to do a good job of, of clearing chips because it kinda, you know, just like if you took a garden hose and we're washing stuff off of a you know, driveway or whatever, kinda moving it back and forth, you know, helps to kinda work, work stuff out of the, you know, pocket or whatever. But this is all within the within uh, the post processor in Fusion. It's taking into account, I believe, the the height of the tool sticking out of the collet holder, and so we see it's either I have to compare the numbers in the code to see whether it was using the full stick out from the uh, tool holder or whether it was just using the height that the um, height of the, the cutting edge. So we'll, this will take a little while to run through this hole, but. We're going to jump forward to another little bit where the pocket's a little bit deeper to see where it's clearing those chips. So here we're nearly through the through pocket at the bottom of that plate. You know, we're not real deep here, but you can see how that motion has has really worked to drive the chips out. You can see it as it's moving around that 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 up and down motion, you know, really just serves to splash the chips out of that out of that pocket. I'm gonna do a little more experimenting with some deeper pockets and see, you know, see if it's able to over, you know, produce the same results that you might get from the people that are running high, you know, larger pumps and multiple streams, you know, right there at the same spot. You know, I really think that this this wiggling up and down motion, you know, might be key to key to solving that. is going to cut through here in just a second but you can see that it's really doing a good job of, of uh, getting those chips away I like the having that L like having that LED light on there but uh, with the shiny surface sometimes we get it messing up the camera a little bit we saw that earlier with the with the superfly and it, you know it just kind of washes everything out it's not too bad right here but uh, yeah, I was trying to get to the point where you could run run cool and make these videos and have it be viewable but uh, we'll go ahead and jump to the next process and, and see the next one. Now we've got a smaller end mill and we're drilling and uh, doing the, the uh, counter set for the cap screws that'll go in this bottom plate. But since it's an end mill, you can see it's still doing the same up and down process versus the drilling where it would have been set to Z0. This is uh, boring code, uh, I believe is the operation in the Fusion. Switching to the Tormach Shear Hog. This is only going to last for a little while because this thing is the worst of throwing uh, coolant around and it just gets too much on the camera lens and so I had to, had to bail on this. But you can see it's it's uh, gone back to, this is 2D adaptive I believe, 
it uh, went back to have it, setting it based on the tool length and there's actually a, a wiggle built into the code but because the cutter height is so short I guess that answers the previous question um, about whether it was using the stick out or not it's it's using the height of the cutting surface because it did it just to it was you know whatever the very very small cutting height is on the on the shear hog but it's doing a great job again we have the issue where if it because it cuts off center you can see as it's running down ran down that first side and a little bit here the same thing we saw with the superfly where it's dropping just a little bit off that edge you know there's not really anything we can do about that because we can't move side to side you know and you can't uh, can't compensate for that so we'll uh, let this run for as long as we can it's you know the camera here is getting bad so we'll just jump forward to the next next clear spot we're back to our end mill here, just finishing off that edge. And you can see again, it's back to having it travel up and down that, that cutter height. And you can see it's still doing, it's doing a good job of clearing the chips out. Obviously it would be nice for it to, to really clear there behind. I have some thoughts about if you were doing this multiple times, you know, you're making multiple parts of the same code, that you could run basically a cleanup path to have it you know, come through over a certain path and, and wiggle as it ran ran across there and just push those chips off the top of the plate. I don't see any reason why that wouldn't work. You could you could even set the tool higher and uh, you know have it set based on Z0 and then just you can do a wiggle within Z0 and just come across the plate and wiggle and just let it push the chips off to one side. For an operation like this, it's probably not a big deal for a one-off, but if it was something you were doing a lot of times and you really wanted to perfect the code, I think that would be something that could be easily done. Here we've switched to the chamfer, and we can see it's doing the wiggle, which isn't really helpful for the chamfer. It would be better just to have it set at the bottom. That's really more of a tool library issue than than issue with the post processor because that that chamfer is fluted up the sides and so I've got the height set to account for that and it's just using that in the code it's not the end of the world that it's moving around it would be better if it just stayed stayed right there at the end of the tool but uh, you know it serves to push the chips out better so maybe that's not too bad We're just finishing up and we'll show you what the final part looks like without a bunch of coolant on it. So here we switched to side two and I located the part off of that through pocket. What I'm trying to show here, these are all the same tools and you know basically the same operations is this pressure drop that I started to experience. Obviously went through the first part and then uh, first side and now switching to the back. So notice where the stream is on the shear hawk in the starting position. I'm going to go ahead and speed this up here a little bit. You see it's all doing pretty well. But you'll notice it starts to drop off pretty quickly here in just a second. You see it's starting to get lower. And that's just the pressure there. There's been no movement. See it's not even touching it. And especially in an operation like this where there's not a plate for it to be dropping up against, that pressure drop can really be an issue. See, it's way off the tool there at the end. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and got you know some good information about the different tools and how the Smart Cool works with that. Takeaway from this is that I need to look into editing the post processor on a couple of those tools, see if we can change that up a little bit. And the other thing is, I don't think the factory coolant tank is big enough to drive that uh, drive that smart cool since we're losing pressure on some of those longer runs so I think the pump is fine 
you know, as far as size wise, but it runs out of capacity and I've got that, that coolant tank as full as it will go. It may be partially because of the fixture plate that I have on there. And since I don't have the holes plugged yet, it is catching a lot inside that fixture plate. And so I'm losing maybe a gallon or a bit in there. And so as it runs longer, I'm not, it's not recycling through the pump, but you know, a larger storage tank would, would solve that issue. So I think I may, you know, it would be nice for, to, for wash down still to have a larger pump. A big part of what I was trying to determine here was everybody does, does upgrade. Well, not everybody, but most of the people that are really into the Tormach mill, they go through and they upgrade the coolant system with a big pump and they, you know, they really flood a bunch of coolant in there. And as we saw here, it seems, and we haven't, haven't done a lot of deep pockets, but it looks like with the smart cool and it, and it moving up and down uh, for some of those deeper pockets that that motion of moving up and down does seem to drive the chips out pretty well. I want to do a couple tests with some deeper pockets and, and, uh, and see if we get some better results on that, you know, more determine exactly what we think about it. But I think going to a larger, larger storage for the coolant and potentially a bigger pump you know, it's certainly a direction that you need to go. Based on what I'm seeing here, for longer runs, you know, the smart cool, as it loses pressure, it's off angle, so it's not hitting the tool. I think it works really well. I'd like to see if we put a bigger pump on there and, and keep driving, you know, drive a higher pressure even to the smart cool and get a result from that. Air compressor kicking on. Um, but, uh, you know, more work to be done, but uh, hopefully good information and you guys got something from this. I'm, I'm still working on it and we'll, uh, we'll see where we get.